Right. Good afternoon. The time is 5.47 p.m. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Conway Road, State Road 15 at Simmons Road Safety Improvements Public Hearing. My name is Kevin Marquez, and I'm the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. Eric Troll, a member of the project team, will be presenting the information uh, during the hearing. I will now turn it over to our moderator for the evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Troll, and I will be your moderator for the meeting. This hearing is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This hearing is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 992100-3. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box. Then simply click send to submit your comment or questions to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public hearing. Click the handouts icon to see the available handouts and click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this hearing, please type the issue in the question box on the control panel on GoToWebinar to report it. Send an email to david at valerangroup.com and I'll spell that out for you. It's D-A-V-I-D at V-A-L-E-R-I-N hyphen G-R-O-U-P dot com or call 630-363-4651. And staff will do their best to assist you. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by July 13th, 2021, 14 days after the public hearing, will become part of the project's public hearing record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the hearing. This public hearing is being recorded and a recording of this presentation will be posted on the project's webpage within one week following the hearing. There are multiple ways to submit comments or questions. You can make a verbal or a spoken comment. If attending in person, please fill out a speaker request card so we will know you wish to speak at the podium during the public comment period. For online participants that wish to speak, please type your name and the words, I wish to speak in the question pane on the GoToWebinar control panel. When your name is called, you will need to unmute yourself on the GoToWebinar control panel before speaking. Lastly, if attending as a dial-in participant, you can call the project manager at 386-943-5527 to provide verbal comments after the public hearing. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you can complete a printed comment form. If you're participating online, you can submit written comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments can also be submitted on the project website at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 992100-3. You can also contact the project manager, Kevin Marquez, directly by email at kevin.marquez. And I'll spell that for you. It's K-E-V-I-N dot M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z at dot dot state dot fl dot us or by us mail at 719 south woodland boulevard mail station number 562 deland florida 32720 this contact information is also available on the public hearing notification that you may have received by mail the Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, 
religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720. By phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith and the number two, that's J-E-N-N-I-F, E-R dot S-M-I-T-H, the numeral two, at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, the state Title VI coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, mail station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399, by phone at 850-414-4753, or email at Jacqueline.Paramore, that's J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E dot P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location on the project website and in the hearing notifications. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's public notice website, the Orlando Sentinel, and on the project's webpage. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, and elected and appointed officials, as well as government agencies, were also notified about this public hearing. As mentioned, the project is in Orange County on Conway Road, State Road 15, at the intersection with Simmons Road. We are making these changes to reduce conflict points and improve safety following a roadway study completed in July 2019. Westbound left turning vehicles often sit at the median opening, blocking southbound left turning vehicles as well as motorists traveling northbound on Conway Road. This study found that there were 17 crashes in a two year study period leading to the changes that are being proposed. One of the most important responsibilities of the Florida Department of Transportation is to ensure that the design of each state road properly balances access and mobility. Access management is used to provide this very important balance. A basic principle of access management is to limit the number of conflict points along a roadway by minimizing the number of driveways and median openings and restricting certain movements at some median openings. In some cases, like this one, Converting a full median opening to a bi-directional median opening, which only allows left turn or U-turn movements, can reduce conflicts and crashes. So, what are conflict points? Conflict points are locations along a roadway where the paths of two vehicles can legally cross, just not at the same time. Each conflict point is a location where a crash can occur. Currently, there's a full median opening at the T intersection of Conway Road and Simmons Road. Drivers intending to turn left from westbound Simmons Road onto southbound Conway Road sometimes back up into the intersection, blocking the northbound lanes on Conway Road. Traffic intending to turn left from southbound Conway Road onto eastbound Simmons Road can also be blocked by traffic in the median intending to merge onto southbound Conway Road. The proposed improvements aim to reduce these points of conflict. The proposed safety improvements at the T intersection of Conway Road and Simmons Road include converting the full median opening at this intersection into a bi-directional median opening, modifying directional signage and pavement markings. Once complete, left turns will not be permitted from westbound Simmons Road to southbound Conway Road. Drivers will only be able to turn right onto Conway Road. A new median will still permit northbound and southbound U-turns at the T-intersection with Simmons Road. These median changes will reduce many potential vehicular conflict points with the proposed configuration, making the roadway safer for all users. In addition, these practices increase mobility and efficiency, reducing congestion and allowing more vehicles to safely navigate the roadway. 
and a survey of drivers across five Central Florida projects involving access management changes. 78% said they felt safer and 84% felt that the traffic moved better. We'll now enter the formal public comment period for this project. Anyone desiring to make a verbal statement regarding the project will now have the opportunity to speak. Please note, to ensure all who wish to speak are able to, all questions and comments will be responded to in writing following the public hearing. Remember, if you want to leave a verbal comment or question over the phone, please call the FDOT project manager at 386-943-5527 after the meeting. Again, you can provide verbal comments and questions in one of multiple ways. To comment at the in-person location, you can state your comments at the microphone. You will need to submit a speaker request card if you have not already done so. If you are joining us online, use the GoToWebinar control panel, and you can request to speak by typing in the words, I wish to speak in the question box. The last way to comment verbally is to call the project manager at 386-943-5527 after the public hearing during normal business hours. With that, we'll now turn it back to the project manager to begin our public comment period. Call upon in-person participants who requested to speak. Come to the microphone when your name is called and state your name and address. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your time to three minutes. Please keep in mind that we will be responding to all comments and writing following this meeting. The first speaker card is for John Rogers. Good evening. Uh, John Rogers, 4554 Simmons Road, Orlando. Uh, my concern is this, 90% of my traffic coming out of Simmons Road is southbound. And now you want me to go northbound and make a U-turn to come southbound again. Now, everybody knows that a U-turn is more dangerous than coming off Simmons Road and making a left-hand turn, primarily because so you make a U-turn, you have to come up there, make a full stop, and then wait for traffic to slow down, which they don't do, and emerge into traffic that way. Sometimes you have to make a three-point turn because your vehicle is in the wrong spot. So yes, it is more dangerous to make a U-turn than it is to do it the way it is right now. The, to me, that's unacceptable. I mean, if you're going to make a change, why put a Band-Aid on something that you may, in a year or two, have to change again? And besides that, all you're doing right now is you're you're moving a, one traffic problem down the street about two blocks. And then you're also you're going to make more traffic making the U-turns than you are currently doing now. So why? I mean, you guys are supposed to do this all the time, but I've looked at these projects here, Simmons Road or Conway, uh, Conway Road right now, you have so many places where you can't make a, a left-hand turn. Say if you want to go Northbound, coming out of this parking lot here, you have to go down the Hawker Road, and make a U-turn in the intersection to come back north. I've seen accidents there. Are you changing that road too? And the one thing you haven't discussed that is how long is this going to take? I have uh, seen FDOT road traffic problems in this area they take about three times as long as they should because you don't work on the project from beginning to the completion. You work on it every two to three weeks, maybe even longer than that. 
Take, for example, the last one was the Kennedy and Gatlin. It took seven months to complete that project. It shouldn't have. Okay, my time's up. Thank you. Is Alan, Mr. Alan Clayman. Uh, hi, I'm Alan Clayman. I live at 4460 Tidewater Drive, which is in Lake Conway Woods. So I'm looking at this uh, from the viewpoint of Lake Conway Woods. We already have a difficult time at the corner of Lake Conway Woods. Uh, Simmons, you're going to take all the, the south traffic from Simmons, send it up the road to Lake Conway Woods where there's a left turn and a U-turn. Uh, Conway Woods, as it is now, if you want to go, there's a tremendous amount of traffic, lots more than it used to be. If you want to get out and go to the left at a busy time in the morning or later in the afternoon, you really have a dangerous time doing it. If you can get halfway, you can stop and say, okay, I'll wait till the other half comes. Unfortunately, you're gonna take all those people from Simmons Road, in addition to all the other people coming north, putting them in that left turn lane where the person in the middle can't see anything. So it's going to be a lot more dangerous. Uh, so what you're doing is taking the problem, as he said, from Simmons Road and complicating the Lake Conway Woods Road. We have a lot of cars going in and out. As it is now, in the busy time of days, I turn right and make a U-turn at Simmons Road, which a lot more people are going to do. That's going to increase the danger because you're going to have people coming up and, they, and we make the U-turn, you won't be able to see because of the other lane. You have a left turn, U-turn lane there. There's no street there. There's no other people. You have two or three other options from Hoffner Road to make a U-turn. How many people are going to drive all the way up to Simmons to make the U-turn to go back to Hoffner? It's not going to happen. So what you're doing is taking a somewhat dangerous sign in a less area in a less busy region, moving all that traffic into another section, which is a dangerous area to start with. And it's just not a bad idea. You're going to have more accidents with all the U-turns. If you're going to do anything, put a light in there. Let people have a light. Then you take away the, the, the danger of the left turn and you don't complicate the decisions at Lake Conway Woods. Thank you. The next speaker is Ms. Bridget King. I'm at 4111 Floralwood Court in Orlando, and I'm a resident of Lake Conway Woods, and I'm going to echo what the previous speakers commented on about moving the problem up to Lake Conway Woods. It's a very dangerous intersection on a, on a normal day, no matter what time you leave. But one of the things that I've noticed that this doesn't address is the amount of congestion and the speed of, of traffic on Conway. And I don't think that this is going to fix that. So, you know, and, and I, I would, when 528, when the, when the toll roads were changed on 528, we got a a lot more traffic on Conway because I think people are trying to avoid the tolls. So I, I want to know if anybody considered even a roundabout because a roundabout, however it's spaced or multiple roundabouts would not only perhaps help the, the reduce the, the traffic incidents, the points of conflict, but it would by default slow the rate of speed. I live five houses off of Conway and the amount of drag racing at night is abhorrent. Um, I can't imagine, you know, and, and even today, 60 miles per hour easily during rush hour, cars weaving in and out of traffic. And I think roundabouts would help solve those problems. So I, I just would like to make sure that those are considered. I know the FDOT has done a lot of research and published a lot of information on the effectiveness of roundabouts. And it would seem that Conway would be very conducive for something like that if a traffic light were not, were not possible. That's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, 
Uh, the next speaker is Mr. Sean Polak, Poland. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sean Pollock. I live at 4402 Blonigan Avenue. Uh, echoing off of what everyone else said, you know, you're pushing all the traffic problems, you know, right up the street into Lake Conway Woods. Um, if it's about safety, what about putting a, you know, speed limit in front of Shenandoah? Um, you're going to push more traffic uh, on my side of Simmons down those streets, down the residential areas where kids are playing. There's not that many kids on Simmons playing in the street. There are a lot of kids playing, you know, in those residential areas where people are going to now use as a cut through to get to the U-turn quicker. Um, many of the homes, like on one side of the on Simmons, the homes, you know, are backing, you know, Simmons, you know, they're not seeing that traffic that's behind them. Um, does, you know, I think it's all about, you know, how people drive. It's about, you know, their behavior while driving. It's not, you know, so much about, you know, the lanes. Um, it's about people on their phones, people being distracted. It's, you know, those things. Um, by taking away that left-hand turn from Simmons onto southbound Conway, you're just getting rid of an option for people. If it is dangerous, um, where they can't make that left, they're going to make that right, and then eventually pop a U-turn. That option's already there. You know, it's just taking away an option to go left. Uh, what else? Um, it was mentioned that there were 17 accidents in the two-year. Does it take into account like the time and the other contributing factors? If they said yes, it was solely this intersection that caused it. Um, were there factors like was the driver you know distracted you know what what was happening during that was it solely this intersection which I doubt it would be um, if that was really a thing I'm thinking that there would only be right hand turns coming off of like the residential areas and then you know you hit the traffic light so you know I'm thinking that's not gonna happen uh, yeah, that's pretty much it I have a little note about the conflict points that you know, it was on the PowerPoint, you know, I, on, on Simmons or not Simmons on Conway, you'll see like people take out, uh, uh, concrete light poles, go into houses, go into, you know, anything and everything along that road. It's about their behavior. It's about how they're driving. You know, that's pretty much it. That's all I got to say. Thank you. The next speaker is Mr. Michael Hurley. Michael Hurley, 5024 Simmons Road. Uh, I bought a piece of property on Simmons Road 40 years ago. So I've been here a while. Um, at that time, Conway was two lanes. And there was a, speaking of a roundabout, which the lady mentioned earlier, there was a roundabout at Conway and Hoffner called uh, uh, Conway Circle. Uh, so I just think that's a little aside. But personally, what I've seen in 40 years and what I see now, the only solution, the only solution I think everybody in this room would unanimous, unanimously agree is a demand traffic light. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Mr. Mark Peterson. My name is Mark Peterson. I live at 4105 Fallwood Circle. I am a licensed contractor. Um, I What I wanted to ask, most have asked, my concern is mainly for my fellow friends and neighbors that live in Lake Conway Woods. Um, I think most people feel like no matter what we do as individuals, you guys, not necessarily you, but FDOT, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. And then we're gonna have to sit back and go, well, you know, they shoved it up our ass again. And that's the way I feel. So anyway, in the event that no matter what any of us care about or say or think, they do what they're going to do because 
they're the higher power or whatever. Are they going to put a no U-turn sign in front of our neighborhood to eliminate? I think everybody agrees. You do this. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it as private individuals. But I promise you, there will be more accidents in front of our neighborhood than you'll be able to keep up with. The, the, the congestion will be unreal. Everybody that makes a right turn, going to work or whatever they're doing. And that's usually, that's what I see as a contractor. I'm in and out of people's houses and homes and neighborhoods all the time. Is early in the morning, you've got a little congestion at the Simmons Road. You've got congestion in our neighborhood, people trying to get out. One lady made a comment. Yeah, they fly up and down Conway Road. Yeah, we've all sped at one time or another. But the moral of the story is you're moving one problem from one area to the next. And if you're going to do that and you're going to say, here it is, it's in your face, you got to live with it, take it or leave it, at least do something to help us prevent more accidents. Either, either do something to our entranceway to prevent all the U-turns, allow people to get into the neighborhood where they live and pay taxes so we do have a right to speak up, but do something besides just suffice other people who have bitched and complained, oh, well, we can't get up Simmons Road or whatever their complaint is. Just because you've had accidents to me is not an excuse to alter the way traffic moves. I agree with the other guy, cell phones. Yeah, we all use them. I make the mistake. I use them. We all are guilty of it in one way or fashion. So there's, there's no out by just going and answering a few people's complaint because you guys made the comment, well, people have complained about this and we've had accidents. Well, hell, come in front of our neighborhood. I got plenty of neighbors and friends that live in Lake Conway Woods who have had children injured, pulling in and out of our driveway, parents, mothers, grandparents, you know, and I've heard the complaints for the 20 years I've lived here. Nobody's done a damn thing. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Miss Marilyn Singer. I, I brought a prop, even though I see you have a map here. Mine is a little. Um... Oh, OK. Well, it doesn't show Gatlin. There are only two exits for all of these people including people who go to the Conway Little League ball field and the Orlando World Outreach Center. There are only two exits for all of these people. Actually, there's three. One is on Gatlin, one is on Simmons, and one is on a tiny little residential street called Coger. I forgot to mention the address, 4515 Coger. So all the people on Seals, on Gilpin, on Flag, and Simmons, and Blonigan and Fibro and Gasparilla and Leola and Conway Landing Drive and Coddington Street and so on, including potentially the people in the neighborhood adjacent to Gatlin who want to go to Hofner Publix, you know, the best Publix around. They all have to come down. They all come down and go to Simmons and turn left. Well, a lot of them are going to discover that, wow, Coger, I can just go up herd, turn left on Coger, and then turn left on Conway. And what do you know? Coger Street is right across from the only entrance and exit to Lake Conway Woods. And if you look at that neighborhood, there's it's it's unbelievable how many houses there are in that neighborhood. So there's going to be a huge converge, convergence at Lake Conway Woods intersection, which on the east side of Conway is Coger Street, a very small residential street with only about uh, 40 houses. And that's going to get a huge, huge influx of traffic. I did want to mention where will all those people go, Coger or Gatlin? but then they have to turn left onto Gatlin that has a lot of traffic. That's gonna increase. And then the increased traffic at Gatlin and Conway. And the worst situation everybody's been mentioning already is the U-turn situation at Coger slash Lake Conway Woods. Um, my only solution would be to put a light up. 
I also um, have been reading a lot on social media about what's happening, uh, you know, this idea. And people have mentioned that they've been told for years that there was going to be a light put up there. That's all I have. Thank you. The next speaker is Mr. James Becker. Evening, James Becker, 4384 Carrollwood Street. I just was wondering if part of the Simmons study included a, a review of accidents that have occurred at the Lake Conway Woods uh, intersection there. If it if it didn't, it should. So did it? Ah, no answer. So uh, as somebody mentioned the Conway speed limit is 40 miles an hour. Uh, it's, when you pull out from Lake Conway Woods, like I do, whether you're going right or left, you're trying to judge those speeds and uh, a lot of times you cannot judge them. Uh, up north of that intersection, there's Gatlin Street, which has a traffic light. If you're coming from the west side of Conway up to Gatlin. There's no turn on red, which was recent in the last year or so, because there were so many accidents there of people trying to turn right on red and not being able to judge those speeds. And I submit to you that that's probably part of the problem with what's going on at Simmons. But the photos you show of Simmons being operated show people obstructing the southbound or northbound side of Lake Conway, which I think is against the law to obstruct traffic. And that should be even more of a problem than uh, breaking the law. I know you can't stop people from breaking the law. Uh, I was wondering, when I was out in uh, Los Angeles, when I would go on the freeway, they had a signal light. You would pull up on the entrance there to the freeway, and they'd have a signal light that would signal you when you could go when there was a gap in the traffic. Could such a light be put on Simmons to help people negotiate that turn, at least on the southbound side? And that's all I have. The next speaker is Ms. Bridget Spirelli. Spinelli, my apologies. Hi, I wasn't planning on talking, but like after I got here, so I have a 16 year old and he just started driving. I live in Lake Conway Woods and I'm scared every time he leaves the neighborhood. He's also has Asperger's. <laughs> I like just get really scared. And even when I'm driving and making a left and I'm in the middle, if people come and it gets so frustrating because if they're in the middle with me, I can't see. And it's just terrifying. Um, I love my neighborhood. I feel blessed to be there, but I'm just scared every time. <laughs> um, one of the accidents at Simmons was a friend of mine, another, young driver trying to do the right thing by making a u-turn like thinking it was safer to make a u-turn and she was one of the accidents so it was from our neighborhood um just trying to navigate this road that's gotten way too fast um the shenandoah light is by um the school and then there's an apartment that's it when why do they have a light? I, obviously because of the school, but it's all day. Like to me, why don't they just have that during school time? And then maybe it would be, they could put a light somewhere else um, because that's what I think people are like, oh, another light. But 
it's just too fast the whole the whole road so i don't know i just want to keep our and there's so many new babies so like these people have no clue when their kids get 16. That's the next speaker is Mr. Mark Surik. Um, uh, just so that everybody's aware, uh, multiple speakers have seated Mr. Surik uh, their time, so he will be allowed to make a, a longer comment. All right, good evening. Thank you for everyone for letting me speak tonight and to um, also neighbors that seated some time. My name is Mark Zurich. I'm the president of the board of directors for the Lake Conway Woods Homeowners Association. So I'm here tonight speaking on behalf of the Homeowners Association, as well as myself as a concerned resident. Um, you know, I will say that I'm not speaking for every homeowner in the neighborhood, but I have spoken to probably 100 to 150 of the homes that we have, and I have not spoken to one community member that is in favor of this project. So all of the feedback that I've gotten so far, you know, has been negative feedback. First and foremost, you know, let me paint a picture of Lake Conway Woods. Who are we? How long have we been here? And how important is Lake Conway Woods to this community and the foundation of the Conway area? So first of all, you know, we are a mandatory deed restricted uh, neighborhood that has homeowners association dues that go back 50 years. So our partnership with Orange County, with the state of Florida is long, is thorough, and is a really good partnership. And we should have been consulted as part of this. Our neighborhood was not notified of this project. We found out about it through social media and thank God for social media. Otherwise we wouldn't even know this hearing would be happening today. You know, some of the things about our neighborhood, we were here when Conway was a two, -way, two lane road. We were here before MCO was a public airport when it was a military airport. So. We have dealt with a lot of governmental changes over the 50 years that we have been around, but this one just goes too far. You know, our tax dollars cannot be used to make our neighborhood less safe, more inconvenient, and potentially lower the property values and the safety of our residents. It's just something that we cannot stand for as a neighborhood. You know, I would say of all the neighborhoods when you look around, and I'm gonna use the map here. So if you look here, and there are some things that are not seen on this map, so first of all, Lake Conway Woods is 267 homes. We go from here all the way up to here on the map where a different neighborhood, Shenandoah, starts. So we are this huge section of the map as one neighborhood with one entrance and one exit by design. If you look at all of the other neighborhoods on the other side of Conway that are not as planned in the same way, they have all individual exits across Conway Road. They can go right, they can go left, even Shenandoah, which is next to us, they can go right, they can go left at certain interchanges. So they can flow in and out of their neighborhoods. Our neighborhood was designed to have one entrance and one exit. We have an eight foot brick wall that goes all the way around our neighborhood because we only want traffic traversing up and down Lake Conway Woods Boulevard so that we are going to have more impacts than any other community in all of Conway by this simple change. What is going to happen is you're gonna turn off the left at Simmons and all of the traffic that comes out of there is either gonna go down Cogar, like has been previously mentioned, and they're gonna come through our intersection or they're gonna take a right, go north and make a U-turn. Let's talk a little bit about U-turns. U-turns are a big, really sticking point in this area of Conway because we have watched as Hofner has expanded over the last several years, they have removed every single left turn. It seems like DOT's answer is, instead of trying to control traffic, instead of trying to, to improve drivers, we're just gonna turn off lefts and we're gonna make people take rights and take U-turns. When you leave this plaza tonight, I want you guys to leave the plaza and tell me how you go north on Conway from here, okay? First of all, you can go through a closed bed gas station over here and try to make a right and then a U-turn, which you can't do because there is no shoulder. I have a 1500 series truck. I have a half ton truck, a normal size vehicle, not an extended cab. It is not a three quarter ton truck. It's not an extended wheelbase. To make a U-turn anywhere on Conway Road from Curry Ford to Hofner, it takes a three point turn. A three point turn with 55 mile an hour traffic coming down the road is the most unsafe thing. A left turn is way safer than a U-turn. 
U-turns are not safe on Conway Road. They are not safe on Hofner. And when you leave here tonight and you follow the law and don't turn left out of the CVS and you turn right and you have to turn into crunch and then turn around in the gym and then come back out, then take a right, then take a left at a light and you add 10 minutes to your drive, I want you to tell me how well turning off left turns do because it does not work in this community. Some of the other things I wanna talk about is right now, as far as traffic flow, if you were to take a left out of Lake Conway Woods Boulevard in the morning, there is normally five, 10, 15 cars that are backed up. When you, when you do this and you take this left off of Simmons and they come north on Conway, all of these people, if we're following the law, they have the right of way. So all of those U-turn drivers, forget all the other safety issues, I might now have 50 cars backed up trying to take a left out of the neighborhood. 267 homes, average of three cars, three cars per household. We have 900 cars, plus workers, plus lawn people, plus construction workers, plus the people cleaning the pools. All of these cars are coming in and out of one way. So all of these things are going to have a really bad impact on our neighborhood. At the end of the day, I don't think this project was thought out well enough. The data was done in July 2019. I'm a wealth management by, advisor by trade with JP Morgan Wealth Management. If I was using 2019 data to, to give my clients advice, I would be doing a horrible job as a financial advisor. We've had a global pandemic, we've had a shutdown. There are so many more people here today in Orange County because of COVID, because of people moving to Florida. A traffic pattern that was studied in July 2019 is useless. It is not good information. It is outdated, stale dated information, and a new study must be done that is much more far encompassing. It must go all the way from Gatlin, all the way down to Hofner. It's got to look at all of the areas around to really look at the impact this is going to have it's instead of just stopping 18 accidents from one left turn road. I would like to finish and just say thank you for being here, but at the end of the day, I think you guys need to go back to the drawing board. I think this needs to be taken off the table completely, and if you must put and remove that left-hand turn at Simmons, there is no other safe option than to put a traffic light at the intersection of Lake Conway Woods Boulevard and Conway Road. It is the only answer that is going to please the DOT from people taking a left, and at the end of the day, People can make a U-turn legally. People can come out of Lake Conway Woods safely, and everyone is happy. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, well, this concludes our in-person speakers. I will now turn it back over to Eric um, to hear public comments from our online participants. All right. Thank you, Mr. Marquez. Uh, we will now call upon online participants who have requested to speak. Uh, when your name is called, you will need to unmute your microphone using the GoToWebinar control panel uh, shown on the slide. Uh, if the microphone button is orange, uh, that means you need to unmute yourself. Uh, if it is green, that means you need uh, your microphone is uh, unmuted and ready for you to speak. Uh, again, please state your name and address. Uh, and if you represent an organization, municipality, uh, or other public body, please provide that information as well. Uh, finally, we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes, um, and we will get the, the list of folks ready here. Um, bear with me just one second. Good evening. 
This is Cheryl Fugis. Is it my turn? If I could see a thumbs up would be great. <laughs> okay, great. My name is Cheryl Fugis and I live at 5166 Coddington Street in the subdivision of Conway Landing. And I just would like to bring up a, a few different points and maybe some that we haven't even spoke of um, yet this evening. Um, first of all, and maybe you can address it uh, later on in the meeting, but if we were to make this a no left turn, where would you suggest that all the residents off of Simmons turn left to head south on Conway Road? I don't see any place that is not a U-turn um, at all. So that to me causes a problem. I found four different options that we could consider. Um, the first option would be um, heading west on Simmons. Um, you would turn um, onto Heward and then onto Kroger and then you wouldn't have to make a U-turn, but you still would be blocking um, Conway Woods. Um, so that's not a good option. Um, the other one is, okay, let's turn right onto Conway because we can't turn left now. I immediately have to get into the left lane, which is dangerous, and then do a U-turn. Um, and if there's no U-turn, as, as one of the gentlemen suggested, then, okay, where do I go? Do I make a huge turn up at Gatlin and, and, and Conway? It just doesn't seem like a good situation. Um, the third option would be, I've got to travel the other directions and take Simmons, which turns at the curve, turns into Kennedy. Then I have to go to Barber Park, make a left on Gatlin, basically go and make a complete circle um, and then make a left on Conway just to turn and travel south. Um, the fourth option would be um, forget trying to travel south on Conway from Simmons and just give all my business to the other, the Publix, the Wendy's, the McDonald's and everybody else because it's too much of a headache for me to try and service um, those businesses um, to the south of me. And finally, and unfortunately for me as a retired Air Force veteran, I, I, I don't want to deal with it. And I probably would put my market in sell and let somebody else deal with the problem. I think it will affect home values because who wants to be in a big area where you can't, you can't travel freely? Also, what about in an emergency? and we have to evacuate or something, we've got one way out. You know, well, I guess we have two ways out. We can go over at Barber Park and try and escape and get out, or we can make a ride on Conway and then head north and, and try and go someplace. But other than that, there's there's really no other, other things. Um, my next area that I'd like to bring up, and I haven't heard a lot about it yet. Pardon me? 4034 Terrywood Avenue. Is somebody else speaking, I think? I can't hear the, I can't hear Eric. The, the floor is yours, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, Shannon Doa, the children, what about their safety? Um, I don't think they're going to reopen the, the backfield. Kids used to not even get onto Conway. They used to do a cut through. There was a little sidewalk they could cut through the field and get to the get to the school. Well, that's closed down. And so now the parents having to get their, their children at the elementary school back and forth daily is really kind of a headache. It can be done. This all could be done, but it is really just, it's a nightmare situation for dropping off and picking up your kids. Um, next, will this really yield and increase safety? Um, I'm not sure that it's really a problem other than waiting for those who use Conway as a cut through or a connector route from the 528. I'm not sure what the, the answer would be to that. I do know I have seen some people say it's not a, a through way. You know, I know they say like no semi trucks or whatever. I don't know if anything like that could be done. Um, 
I don't know if we could do, say some, not speed humps, but like speed strips, like they do um, on some highway exits, kind of to get their attention that we've got cars coming out from there. Um, and another light may slow down the traffic and stop a lot of people cutting through. Conway Little League was already mentioned. That is a lot of traffic um, for baseball, for Little League. Um, my son-in-law is a firefighter at Station 72. And not that he's the expert, you guys are. But he says that there really isn't as big of a problem. There's a couple other um, intersections that really could use attention more than, than this way. Um, I do know that my son was a hit and run victim victim at uh, Conway in Michigan, and that's got a light there. So I don't know whether we do a light, a turnabout, speed strips. Um, you guys are the experts, and I'll try and support you. But I can't I can't keep this home if I can't access the community that I live in. And thank you, and I know you guys will do a good job. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have Jim Shaston, and following that will be Brian Ashby. Jim, just give me a second to get you unmuted here, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Shastin, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Jim Shastin, 4691 Sturbridge Circle, Ethan's Glen. I live that is a housing development off of Simmons Road, close to Conway. My travels down uh, Simmons Road to Conway Road, 95% of the time is a left-hand turn, going to work, supporting the businesses close by. If we're gonna be forced to make a right-hand turn to make a U-turn, I don't wanna to have to deal with the traffic coming out of Coger, southbound on, on uh, Conway, and those coming out of Conway Woods. I think that's loading up that intersection, moving the problem forward, just two blocks up the street. I don't think what's been realized here is Simmons Road is not just a surface neighborhood street. It is a street that supplies multiple neighborhoods all the way down through Kennedy clear to Gatlin. It is a highly traveled road. I don't know what your deal showed, but there's a lot of traffic on that road. If you've got to do something, the only option is going to be a red light, an on-demand red light where somebody pulls up, you know, that goes to the timer and all that. Blocking a left-hand turn at Conway is not the, pro not the problem, and it's not going to fix it. It's just going to move it down. Uh, as far as the traffic and accidents, you're going to have them. I don't care where you're at because people are crazy out there. Half of them I don't think have ever been educated to how to drive. Okay, They shouldn't have license. That's another issue. I think there ought to be more public announcements on what's right and wrong, but that's another issue also. It's All these neighborhoods, you're going to force down Coger which is a neighborhood. You're gonna have traffic like crazy down that road is a very narrow road. People park on both sides of the road. I wouldn't want that going through my neighborhood. I've only got one way in and out of mine, so that wouldn't happen, but that neighborhood is gonna get loaded up. There's gonna be people getting hit, vehicles getting hit, so on and so forth. And then you got the same problem when you get to the intersection. You gotta make a left-hand turn, but you gotta deal with all the other traffic. Again, you're just piling up and making it worse yet. I don't see why we need to load that intersection up down there. We got a perfectly good intersection. Uh, by putting the divider in there is not going to help, especially if you did it like you did down by the uh, store down there where you're coming out. They got a nice divider so you can only make one way. The only thing they didn't extend it far enough. I still people still see people coming out of that uh, where the old Winn Dixie used to be, coming across there and making a northbound turn against the law. You know, it's it's not right. So it's not it's not helping. A red light is the only way you're going to go if you have to do something. There's only time in the morning a little bit, a little time in the evening when it gets real busy. Biggest thing is speed. They're traveling too fast. I've had people almost run me over at 65 miles an hour when I'm doing trying to do the speed limit down there. There needs to be a little better control. Maybe a red light would help slow them down a little bit more. I don't know. That's all I got to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Shafty. Uh, next up is uh, Mr. Brian Ashby. Uh, I do not see any others. If I missed you, please just uh, add your name to the, the, the comment list there and I'll, I'll get to you. Um, but uh, Mr. Ashby, let me just unmute you and the floor will be yours. Uh, 
And it looks like uh, you might be muted on your side. So whenever you're ready, just hit that, that orange microphone up the top right corner and uh, uh, the floor is yours. Mr. Ashby, we cannot hear you. There we go. There we go. There it is. Floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Um, so Brian Ashby, 4106 Terrywood Avenue um, in the Lake Conway Woods. I live in the Lake Conway Woods development. Um, when I saw this on, on social media um, and in the industry that I'm in, which is a familiar one to you all as well, uh, I was taking a look at this and I understand that there have been studies that have shown that in certain instances, a U-turn can be uh, safer than a left-hand turn. Um, that being said, I don't know if the full extent of the scope of this has been studied because by limiting the amount of U-turns and the, um, the left out of Simmons onto Conway and pushing those up, to Lake Conway Woods Boulevard, you're going from a three-way kind of, when we, when we talk about conflict points, you're going from a uh, conflict points of, you know, a left onto Conway and a left into Simmons and a U-turn maneuver uh, on Conway to full directional in every single direction from Lake Conway Boulevard, uh, Lake Conway Woods Boulevard, Conway, both north and southbound, and Coger Street. So if we want to talk about conflict points, we are going to be exponentially increasing the conflict points at a, a, a unrestricted uh, intersection at Lake Conway Woods Boulevard in Coger, which personally I feel, um, in, in my opinion, is, an is, is much more dangerous when we're talking about conflict points. Now you're asking drivers to make um, a multitude of additional decisions while they're making that turn, that turning maneuver. Uh, movement, whether that's right, left, or through. Um, and I think by pushing all of that traffic that was originally going to uh, make a left from Simmons up to make a U-turn on a road that already has, what, over 31,000 uh, AADT trips on it, such as Conway, um, with, a, with a high speed limit already, I think you're just asking for drivers to make a multitude of, of decisions that I don't think is very safe uh, in a neighborhood community like this. So um, I hope that your study, uh, when you guys uh, are looking at this, I hope that you look at the, the intersection just to the north with Lake Conway Woods Boulevard and Coger with Conway, because I think that's extremely important to evaluate the modifications that you're proposing here and how that impacts uh, the intersections just to the north of that. So uh, that's it for me. I appreciate the time. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, next up, we have uh, Michael uh, Pistowski. Just unmute you here. Right, currently, Michael, you are the last one I have on the queue. If there is anybody else uh, online that wishes to speak, um, please feel free to uh, add your name. Can you hear me? Yes, you are good to go, sir. Thank you. Okay, yes, excellent. My name's Michael Pasoski. I live at 4034 Terrywood Avenue in Lake Conway Woods. Uh, yeah, I'm actually shocked that we didn't hear about this this meeting. I don't really follow social media a whole lot, so I agree 100% with what Mark Zurich said. He sent an email to the neighborhood a couple days ago. Um, I've been coming to Lake Conway Woods for 40 plus years. It used to be like an oak covered tree line, two lane road, and instead of that big eight foot wall, it used to be a picket fence out there in the old days. Um, I, it just almost seems like if the Simmons teams put it, it's just gonna basically push the traffic problem up to like Conway was in Coger. Uh, so, because honestly, like I'm a very experienced driver, I'm 57 years old. So I don't really have a problem getting out of Lake Conway Woods. Yes, it's very busy if you're 16 years old or a new driver, I can see it being very challenging. I'm patient, it's just gonna push the problem. So the only time I have a problem getting out of my neighborhood is there's a few streets across from us that have to make the U-turn. It's only when someone has to make U-turn, I have a hard time getting out of my neighborhood. And it's just going to increase it like 100% uh, with that. If it has to be closed, there's no other option than to put a traffic light at our neighborhood. But then 
honestly, Coger's going to suffer because there's going to be more people go, hey, there's a traffic light down the street. So I'm not sure what the answer is, but I don't think prohibiting the left-hand turn from Simmons is going to solve anything. And even like Publix, like when you when they did that stuff, I was like, wow, how's Publix going to get their truck? They have to go all the way down Conway Road, turn on Gatlin, go all the way down Gatlin for another mile or so, go all the way back down 436, then get on the beach line to get back to the warehouse and see like, I just see the trucks making lefty and turns and they just cut off all the traffic because you know who's going to argue with the semi truck and it's it's going to be kind of the same thing so anyway uh th those are my comments I'm, I'm not a very good public speaker but I, I felt like i had to say something tonight because like i said it's for me it's manageable it's a fairly wide theme so if you're a good driver or experienced driver it's you, you can if you're in your patient you can pull it in and out the u-turns are the only things that present a challenge to me right now and it's going to increase like quite a bit if this gets moved up. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, next up we have uh, Jessica Dill. Just give me one second here to get you unmuted. And whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Okay, um, I live at 4725 Pinellas Drive. Um, I've lived here for about five years, but I've lived in the Conway community my entire life. Um, I used to live in Ethan's Glen. I've lived in Conway Oaks, um, you know, Bryn Mawr, just all over the place in the community. But I have utilized that intersection um, with Simmons and uh, Conway forever. And I am one of those that has um, a child at Shenandoah right now. And I agree when I have to make a left hand turn, which is literally the only convenient way for me to go right now. Um, I, it's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous, and especially when someone else pulls up next to me. I can't see onto Conway and I just have to pray to God every time I make a left hand turn that I'm going to be OK. And my children are going to be OK. And I just have to trust that I know what I'm doing. Um, I really loved the. A recommendation earlier of a roundabout. I have seen those work, especially off of um, like Gore. And um, but if anything, there has to at least be a stoplight. I know, I know it's inconvenient. You have a stoplight right next to the Shenandoah stoplight. But you know, I've heard the drag racing, everything that happens at night, and I've heard the crashes. And it's it's just it's unacceptable and if you have to add one more light and add a little bit of inconvenience to save people and make the road safer which a light would actually be doing this would not be making the road safer as everyone has pretty much underlined um yeah that's just what i think thank you thank you very much uh, this concludes our online speakers. I will uh, now turn it back over to Mr. Marquez uh, for just a, a few more in-person speakers. Um, um, the next uh, in-person speaker is Ms. Elizabeth Taylor. Well, I wasn't planning on speaking, so this is off the cuff. But it appears that Simmons is obviously a well there, uh, it's a good thoroughfare road, and by eliminating the left-hand turn and forcing traffic either up Conway with a U-turn, which is obviously going to be more dangerous, or forcing them through the neighborhood through Coger, which is truly a residential. It's not a thoroughfare street. It's only about two blocks long. And that's going to increase the traffic on Coger. I think, obviously, it's more dangerous for the particip the people who live on Coger. My address is 4516 Coger. And I also think it is going to have an impact upon the uh, value of the homes if it's a highly traversed street, as opposed to a nice neighborhood street right now. Um, after listening to all the comments, it sounds to me like you're compounding a problem rather than eliminating a problem by eliminating the left-hand turn. Possibly the solution would be to put a light like people have suggested. 
you know, when you have a light, you have time to make that left hand turn because it's obviously given through the light. And I assume that the reason that you're wanting to do this is you think that it's a difficult, dangerous intersection. So a light would be, in my opinion, it would be the most reasonable solution rather than compounding the problem. So I think you're I think you're getting a lot of positives with the light as opposed to a lot of negatives with the blocking off on the left-hand turns. That's all, thanks. Um, the next speaker is Mr. Terry O'Connor. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having this forum and uh, the opportunity to speak. Um, I hadn't really planned on saying like like so many others, but when handed this opportunity, I feel like I need to say a couple of things. And one, I think the most important thing I can express is that oftentimes you try and make something better and you make it worse. So the enemy of good can be better. So you are taking a problem now, a potential problem, and making it worse. You hand this to our neighborhood in Lake Conway Woods and to Cogar across the street. And it's not really gonna, it's, you're, you're talking about going across a couple lanes and when you make the U-turn, it's, it's three lanes you have to cross. First, you have to get across the first northbound lane of Conway and then the two southbound lanes of Conway. And I'm speaking from experience, when they built these streets, they're not very wide and lots of times you do have to make a, a three point turn to make that U-turn unless you plan for it. But it's just, it's taking a, an unsafe, unsafe situation and making it more unsafe. It's going from bad to worse. And I think, um, I think it's lucky that we heard about this and I think it's also lucky that we have the opportunity to let our voices be heard. So thank you for this opportunity. Okay, well, well, on behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public hearing and providing all your input for this project. Um, if you have comments or questions after this hearing, please submit them by July 13, 2021. That's two weeks from now. Our contact information, a recording of this public hearing, all of the project documents and all the other exhibits that are displayed here today will be posted on our project website at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 992100-3. This concludes our public hearing and the time is uh, 6.55 p.m. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you, everyone.